Good morning, Natalia. It's a great, a great pleasure to see you and uh, a great, great pleasure to interview such an expert in knowledge management. And uh, Sesti is very happy to uh, have you here with us today. Huh? Good morning, Vera. It's my pleasure to be here too. And thank you for inviting me to discuss uh, my favorite topic, knowledge management and higher education. Okay, that's great. Well, before we start the interview or asking the questions, uh, I would like you to tell us, to tell us a bit about yourself and uh, your work at the university where you are, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, so. Uh, first of all, I would like to explain my interest uh, to this topic, knowledge management and higher education. I used to be a head of department of knowledge management and uh, methodology of online education at Moscow State University in Russia. And we've got such a mix, knowledge plus online education. And uh, this team at this university launched the first knowledge management system in, uh, within Russian universities. And I'm very proud of this fact. Um, my journey to knowledge management here, <laughs> to be brief, uh, started when I was a PhD student and I was involved uh, in several projects covering uh, uh, information resource management and knowledge economy. Then I moved to area of e-learning and open education. And then I realized that besides uh, technological issues, how to use technologies in teaching and learning uh, experience, we need knowledge management technologies and tools uh, to keep this process, to enrich, uh, to enrich it with innovations. Uh, so, um, and uh, uh, so, so, so from my point of view, knowledge management uh, was a favorable environment to attract lecturers, to create innovations, uh, to keep this transformation process in uh, university, in curricula, in training courses. And right now I uh, have a position as associate professor at Research National, National Research University High School of Economics. And I'm happy to continue my research and go deeper in this topic of knowledge management. And uh, right now I'm con I continue my academic career. Mm -hmm. That's great, that's great. Well, my first question is about uh, specifically about uh, knowledge management. What is knowledge management in higher education? Mm -hmm. It's a good question for start. Honestly, there is a still no common or shared opinion what knowledge management is and specific, specifically in higher education. So international standard uh, ICO, knowledge management system requirements provide, uh, offers us a very extremely short definition. Knowledge management is management regarding knowledge. That's it. Meanwhile, uh, this standard points uh, the main goal of KM as enabling and supporting uh, the processes of creating and using value of knowledge and no more no matter what knowledge is uh, the main uh, focus on value of knowledge and the same idea can be found in theories of pioneers of this area like Jiro Nanaka, Hirotaka Takeuchi, Larry Prusak and other researchers famous by their contributions to knowledge management theory. In higher education KM is considered as an environment for staff activities with a knowledge in order to keep educational, scientific, and societal projects. KM uh, aims to improve university performance at large. And uh, based on my experience, 
we use uh, KM system to organize and keep lectures innovative activities, enhance learning and teaching experience in online education. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I'm going to abbreviate, use the, the abbreviation, right? The Q, Q, w, the Q, QM, right? So yeah. is QM accurate to today's digital world? Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, sure. Yes, of course. And uh, digital technologies are moving very fast and take a huge attention of educators and unfortunately sometimes focus on uh, digital technologies in training courses is moving the meaning and content of training courses uh, just in the shadow of digitalization. And uh, in Russia, there is a tendency to prioritize, prioritize, prioritize uh, digital technologies over content in training courses development. But we should consider digitalization as a current stage of technological transformation and uh, as a previous stages. This stage bases on innovations and um, innovations in learning and teaching processes and the way how to use, how to introduce digital technologies depends on specificity of every scientific and business field. And uh, I would like to give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, so currently I am involved in a project uh, for training of lecturers, uh, for lecturers of medical college. And I feel my weakness in this specific subject of medical uh, areas and field. Because I'm the, I teach my students in management to be flexible, to be brave, to find the original idea, to make decision, to make decision in business. But it's hardly suitable for medical students. They, uh, uh, they shouldn't be so free to make their decisions uh, on such uh, very sensitive issues like healthcare. So we can't, uh, so, so we can't teach uh, lecturers medical lecturers or someone else lecturers, uh, how to use opportunities of digital technologies and uh, digital technologies at large in general. But these lecturers have to create their own uh, innovations and to find a proper way to introduce these technologies to their training courses and to their practice and to improve learning outcomes in their uh, specific subject. And well, I'd like to resume my main idea. So I uh, can provide uh, an environment for people to create innovations, to find a proper way uh, to implement uh, even digitalization uh, tools too. Meanwhile, these digital tools uh, should be considered as a tools and means in this environment. So they're just instruments. Uh, you mentioned making decisions, right? Yes. So do you think uh, uh, knowledge management, uh, one of the key words for knowledge management is making decision, making decisions or not, or is part of it? Making decision is a key word for any management. In management process, we have to make decisions. But uh, there is no specific uh, requirements for making decisions, especially uh, to knowledge management. It's just like uh, at any other types of management. But uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, I would like just uh, emphasize uh, the idea that knowledge help us to make informative decision and uh, to find maybe more alternatives for, uh, for, for possibilities to make decisions. But uh, I don't think that uh, decision making is some special keyword for this uh, topic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, how does uh, knowledge management work in higher education? Mm -hmm. There's different ways how it works. So, uh, but uh, I would like to start uh, answer for this question uh, to explain that the theory of CAM uh, defines five levels for operating with the knowledge. And the first level is individual. And I'm sure that uh, all educators, lecturers are excellent to cope with the knowledge at individual level and to reach mm -hmm. success in this. Then goes team level to keep uh, co-working with knowledge for team, for project, and we can be successful at this level too. It depends uh, how we trust and uh, trust to each other and is there any confidence between, uh, within this team. Uh, third level is um, about institutional level. This level covers entire university and the main difficulties start from this institutional level to cover all uh, knowledge flows, to cover all subjects, uh, subjects to cover uh, all staff of university. But we have to mention first level, it's industrial level, and we can see uh, cases of um, knowledge management system for entire national high education system uh, in uh, Poland, in mm -hmm. Malaysia, if I remember, in some other countries. And the uh, fifth level is about global, it's a global level. And I believe that open educational resources are an attempt to uh, organize this knowledge management, academic knowledge management on a global level. So, uh, the CAM at individual and team level are quite common practices, even if you don't call it uh, as CAM, uh, because we all use web services for communicating, for collaborating, for co-working with information, data, and knowledge. And doing, uh, doing this, we usually keep our current activities and it helps us to solve our current tasks to avoid mistakes. And it's not so difficult to organize for university. It's enough just to provide a set of services uh, from, for example, Microsoft uh, 365 or Google Suite or something like this. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, CAM, uh, a system for entire university, aims at strategical development of the university and it helps to reach strategical tasks and mechanics, uh, mechanism of how knowledge management works on strategical level differs from individual and team levels. And in this uh, perspective, from strategic, uh, strategic perspective, and we have to take into account uh, the culture, uh, the organization of these processes, uh, IT infrastructure of entire university, and there is a lot of issues appeared here on institutional level. Okay. Mm -hmm. How to make knowledge management work for university productivity? Oh, and uh, we have to, uh, uh, we, uh, we have to go back to this institutional level. Uh, of knowledge management in university again. And uh, it requires uh, five elements. In some cases, we can find more elements or less elements, but five is, uh, are the core elements for any case of KM. And the first element is a leader, uh, someone who promotes the value of KM among uh, entire university students and staff to encourage people to use it and reassure them that this is uh, useful for personal university. Uh, the second element is um, organization and including KM in uh, university processes. Uh, so uh, so uh, the activities in KM has to be included in regular practice of personal. 
and there should be a room to do such activities uh, uh, during uh, these uh, business processes, learning or teaching processes. So it should be pointed in this process. And the third element uh, is a set of uh, proper digital technologies. Technologies, uh, the digital world, world bring us a lot of technologies and new abilities. Mm -hmm with data and information and of course we have to take advantages of it and uh, fourth element is a culture culture of open knowledge or shared knowledge and in case of lack of leadership or confidence or trust there can um, sabotage occur and I often hear from my skeptical colleagues that they don't want to share their knowledge, materials, ideas. Mm -hmm. They are afraid of being firing or to be replaced by, for example, online courses. And so our culture is a, one of the driver of knowledge management. And fifth element is a policy of university in KM and it describes all previous elements from university perspectives. It describes how it's supposed to work in university. And uh, all these five elements are essential to make game works for university performance. Uh, but uh, we can notice individual set of this element, individual components uh, to maintain KM in university. And it makes uh, every case of knowledge management in university uh, unique. And mm -hmm. uh, it's hardly possible to find uh, same knowledge management practice in different universities. I mean, uh, knowledge management on institutional level. Mm -hmm. They're very uh, specific to each university. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm very uh, curious about who the actors that should be involved in knowledge management are. Who are these actors? Especially when it involves higher education. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mentioned uh, five elements of KM, uh, of KM, but I miss the main uh, driver uh, of KM. Uh, the main driver is personal staff of university. And uh, uh, our people, our lecturers make uh, this knowledge flow run. Uh, a lot of knowledge flows run and uh, they um, just, enhance uh, knowledge man management cycle. So uh, we can uh, define few main actors. And first of all, it's uh, our lecturers. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to the activities, this you know, knowledge uh, flow is running all the time, it's, it's increasing all the time and uh, helping to reach our strategical goals. Then we can define the uh, actor uh, as a leader and I mentioned his role, and it's uh, important for personal to feel uh, support from leader in their uh, KM activities. Uh, the third actor which can be defined, it very important, it's a KM manager, knowledge mm -hmm. And it's someone or team, uh, even a whole team with a, uh, consists of several, several managers, uh, these people are uh, supposed to organize uh, staff activities uh, with uh, knowledge uh, to motivate personnel to participate in these activities, to help uh, lecturers to start co-working, uh, to help lecturers uh, to solve some conflicts in case of uh, sabotage, uh, sabotage of idea of KM. And, uh, Team of KM managers can include IT maintains because when we are talking about uh, KM right now, we are talking about KM uh, with 
uh, with the help of digital technologies and it's supposed uh, supposed to be maintained by specialists in this area to fix mm -hmm. this environment but it's not all actors and uh, we also can mention uh, students uh, experts from uh, community of uh, practice business uh, representatives from uh, local communities and uh, these actors are important for university uh, which belongs to thought mission so-called thought mission or entrepreneur university which are very interested in uh, these uh, interactions with the business, with the local communities, and so on. And the final composition of uh, actors depends on university man, uh, mission, uh, university strategic goal, and university, honestly, ability to fix these uh, interactions between mm -hmm. actors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how can an educational institution provide access to the right knowledge to everyone? Very tough, a... huh? yeah. Very tough question, but, I... <laughs> but can you simplify? Simplifying, uh, how? how can you provide access to everyone and the right knowledge to everyone? How? I, uh, is there a way, at least a way? It, I, I know it's tough, but is there a way? Yes, I told about toughness of this uh, question because I believe that educational system and any university from the beginning, from old Asian centuries, uh, have was trying to solve this uh, solve this task. But mm -hmm. I'd like to, um, uh, to divide this question for two parts. And okay. the first, refers, uh, first part of this question refers to expanding access to knowledge. And the second refers to right knowledge. And for the first question, um, university answered through libraries, uh, through open course various open educational resources, and I'm sure that enormous bodies of knowledge are affordable for any internet user right now. But we have to think out how to pursue the internet user to apply her or his knowledge request to these available university knowledge sources instead of mm -hmm. Facebook or Google. So I can't uh, see any problem to uh, knowledge access uh, in the internet in the world wide web. But the second question, much more tougher than the first one, because we need to consider aspects of quality of knowledge, how to assess this quality, how to justify this knowledge of uh, mm -hmm. this quality. And usually, uh, in higher education, we use expertise uh, mm -hmm. to justify quality knowledge. We ask someone else who is uh, very respectful in this area, is it correct or incorrect? And uh, well, it's, uh, it works perfect, but it's a very uh, expensive and time consuming process. So, but uh, in case when we have knowledge flow, with a very high speed, almost lightning speed, uh, it's hardly possible to, to provide this expertise of knowledge to every piece of knowledge in our knowledge management system. And uh, well, it's, uh, this uh, approach is not acceptable for knowledge management system. But digital environment for KM allows us to in, uh, allowed us indirectly to uh, estimate uh, knowledge quality. Yes, uh, yeah. no. so indirectly through, uh, through estimates uh, staff's activity. 
to uh, we can evaluate the value of knowledge. So we can uh, count um, uh, times of access of knowledge, extractions of it, reviewing, ranking, ranking uh, of knowledge, modifying on it, and so we can uh, make some conclusion about value of this knowledge, but not about quality of this knowledge skill. <laughs> so uh, the stuff, university stuff, uh, using access the, to such services as a knowledge map, library, communities of practice, uh, some groups and messages to decide what knowledge to take into account and rely on in their own activities, profession, professional activities. But uh, knowledge manager can't say someone what kind of knowledge is correct or incorrect. So the main difficulty is, is to define what knowledge is right, which uh, which one is not right. Yeah, yeah, tough, tough, uh, very tough. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. What are the main concerns and limitations of knowledge management in higher education? One more tough question again, because from <laughs> practice and from cases, we know that failures happen in, you know, with the knowledge management system by education and quite often. And the uh, reason of these failures can be found very often in contradictions. Um, I, I'd like to give you a few examples of these contradictions. For example, so. On the one hand, we have value of open knowledge and uh, free knowledge sharing. Uh, on the other hand, we have academic competition among, among staff. So if our lecturers compete to each other for students rating or for individual publications, it's hardly possible to expect from them working and collaborating and open sharing with knowledge uh, between this within this group. So uh, um, before to start the M process in university, these contradictions had, uh, have to be resolved. And I would like to uh, provide one more example. So um, uh, we can see contradictions in uh, 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 between supporting lecturers' creativity in training process delivery. And uh, from, from other side, we can check the execution of regulation, execution, uh, lecturers' execution of regulations and rules uh, mm -hmm. during this uh, training course. Uh, yes, during this training course. So, and uh, management of university, top management has to make decision what more appro appropriate for university strategy to keep lectures creative creativeness creativity or to uh, motivate lecturers uh, to follow strike regulations or uh, to follow you know, rules in training process and we've got advantages uh, in creativity and regulations too, but uh, there should not be any contradictions when we start our camp process. So encourage our lecturers to create more innovations for their own teaching experience. We uh, have to be sure that these our lecturers wouldn't be punished for their creativeness. So, um, uh, main concerns uh, in knowledge management process occur uh, from these contradictions. Uh, we can find more contradictions in high education. And uh, because in some cases we consider high education as a business, uh, mm -hmm. I, like <laughs> I, uh, I prefer to think that uh, university bring a great social value to. Sure society in general, and we are not going to um, make money on knowledge. But in any case, uh, we have to uh, make a decision uh, which strategy to follow and what activity should be supported in our camp system to create 
some practice or to reproduce this practice in training. And um, main concerns are in losing of competitiveness of lectures, of educational programs, or losing traditions, uh, traditions, one more contradiction between traditions and innovations. And uh, well, and I can't see any limitation to use here university at university because would university design here or not lecturers uh, already use uh, web services for working for uh, communicating they use messengers uh, social networks and they use these technologies to share their knowledge materials to look for ideas for class scenario to um, other activities and it's a right point for university to start manage knowledge on institutional level and it can bring benefits for university it makes this process um, transparent for uh, university management mm -hmm. well we talked about the the side that deals with limitations, concerns, and uh, challenges, perhaps. Huh? So let's talk now about uh, the positive thing of, of it. Huh? So what are the benefits and advantages? Mm -hmm. oh, of course, of knowledge management uh, in higher education. Mm -hmm. yes. so we have a, a better idea of everything, right? A positive idea, I mean. Yes, of course. <laughs> We've got positive idea here. And I'd just like to continue the previous, uh, my answer. So uh, TM supports the staff activities uh, regarding to the most important asset of university knowledge, which is knowledge. So, uh, and uh, by the way, there is no matter what knowledge is. Uh, you deal with the tacit knowledge or uh, explicit knowledge, and mm -hmm. and uh, this uh, process, how our staff deal with the tacit and knowledge uh, and explicit knowledge, became thanks to digital environment transparent, control and influence from university management, and it brings this benefit for university to manage this process for the first time. Because at the previous, uh, before digital era, it hardly was possible to um, estimate, to control all these processes, uh, to deal with, especially with the basic knowledge. So, and uh, management in university can see an influence on these processes, starting from basic knowledge and to uh, encourage uh, um, staff to work harder in some specific area or to uh, wave their attention to another uh, field and so on. And uh, from cases, um, published cases uh, of using GAM in strategic management in universities and review of these cases, and practices show us that GM helps to improve university performance and they help our university to increase, increase the indicators like uh, student enrollment, uh, scientific publication and top journals, international collaborations, um, graduate employment, uh, to um, a spin of, of social innovations and uh, so on. So we can see contribution of GM system in uh, improvement of uh, university performance as a whole. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a really tough uh, study, huh? You are really uh, an expert in this, uh, in this uh, theme, right? So it's very difficult to, if you don't study it to have a, a big picture of all this, huh? It's um, not easy. It's not easy, right? Um, 
it's not. I mean, easy. it's not easy to put it through. <laughs> Actually, uh, it's a regular practice for any lecturer and any um, scientist uh, in university. We do all this knowledge activity all the time. But what we can, uh, what university can do for us as staff university, university right now, uh, just to help us to do this process. Because at the previous stages, well, I've got 20 years experience in uh, academic career, almost 20 mm -hmm. years. So, and I used to be under pressure and control of university all the time. I have to fulfill some reports uh, forms and uh, just to justify that I reached some indicators for my university. And in case of knowledge management system in university, in university we provide for our lecturers support. We, uh, we don't ask uh, only for, from them or their reports how they did their job as a researcher or as a lecturer. We help them to do this job. And it's very important because uh, in the modern digital age, really the speed of knowledge flow is increasing all the time. It's very tough to keep this temp, to keep, to, to keep this speed uh, individually. We need to cooperate to each other. And we do not have uh, enough room to apply our traditional way to deal with the knowledge, to go to the library, to enjoy its silence. I like libraries still. I like to visit it. So wonderful place for it. But um, it's wonderful place for co-working too with my students, for example. But we need uh, to uh, to provide extra opportunities for our lecturers to deal with the knowledge in this digital age, not just asking uh, about results to help them to reach these high results. Okay, well, I have asked all my questions. Would you like to make some final considerations about the topic of our discussion today? Yes. <laughs> well, please, leave us a reflection. Reflection. Yeah, well, for the future. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would like to leave reflection um, for the future. For I would like to leave my reflection based from the uh, on tradition and high education, how to keep with knowledge and uh, with a modern approach, how to uh, keep this knowledge in digital era. So, and uh, and traditional approach in uh, education to knowledge management based on a uh, scientific publication cycle, which includes three stages of pro, pro publication uh, knowledge activity, and it includes unpublished knowledge. Uh, right now we call it like a tacit knowledge, and it's extremely important for entire process uh, to create and disseminate knowledge uh, in, in general. And then we have primary, uh, publication knowledge activities, and then we have secondary uh, publication activities. And it's some traditional approach to knowledge management based on library, on printed textbook, uh, publications, and so on. We issued a lot of educational materials, printed educational materials for our students. And uh, the fresh idea can be found in a uh, business knowledge uh, cycle and popular model uh, of knowledge cycle offered uh, Japanese authors, uh, Nanaka Takeuchi, Kirataka, Ikijira Nanaka, Kirataka Takeuchi. I'm sorry for pronunciation, this is wonderful. No, it's, it's fantastic, it's great. Go on. Yes. And they offered the model uh, of uh, four stages, how knowledge circulates in, in, in a company. And uh, they described this process from tacit knowledge to 
uh, explicit knowledge and to tacit knowledge again. And uh, so uh, we can apply this model for academic knowledge too. And uh, for the first stage, uh, we've got uh, so the model named as S E C I Seki. So the first stage is a uh, socialization at tacit mm -hmm. knowledge, uh, appear, uh, appeared uh, socialization and the tacit knowledge appeared at this uh, stage within the small group. Uh, two, three persons, or maybe even one person, then tacit knowledge goes for externalization to be expressed in models, uh, in some rules, principles, concepts, and so on. And on the uh, third stage, combination, um, uh, this knowledge is already explicit and they are ready to be introduced in uh, entire organization. And at last stage, we've got uh, internalization in stage I, stage I, to reflect the gained experience, to modify knowledge and uh, find uh, a new idea on this topic. So, and these four stages, so socialization, externalization, combination, internalization, mm -hmm. they describe this, uh, how knowledge move uh, from tacit to explicit and to tacit again. And the value of this model for higher education in enabling the stage of work with the tacit knowledge. And it's extremely important stage for start uh, knowledge creation to, uh, to write new curricula, to, uh, to start to launch new scientific projects. And this stage used to be absolutely as a block, black box for university management before the digital age because university management has uh, ability to find out about this project when we climb about this project, yeah, when we climb for, for a grant, for new training course and so on. But it's very important to keep these uh, interruptions between lectures before they, they start produce these explicit knowledge. So, it's my resume for, 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 for this talk. Okay, I really appreciated you sharing your knowledge with us. And uh, I hope we can talk some other time about something that I also uh, can deal with online teaching, online learning. I know that you also like this type of uh, discussion. So we can uh, try to uh, set a date and a time for the second talk. What do you think? Wonderful idea. Uh, thank you for this talk. And I'm uh, always uh, glad to discuss these issues about uh, TM about online learning and it's uh, very important to share experience and actually what we are doing right now is it's exchange of tacit knowledge and it's like a tire, uh, stage of pre-publishing um, activities with knowledge it's very important yes oh. I agree with you Okay, okay, great. So I'll be in touch with you and we will set a date and a time for another interview. It was not, it's not going to be an interview. It's going to be a talk about online learning. What do you think? It's better? Huh? It's better. And in this case, I would like to hear your opinion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In that case, I will be I will be talking with you and uh, exchanging uh, our knowledge about online education, right? Yes, I'm sure you have a lot of to, to share about this. Okay, so for the time being, thank you very, very much, Natalia.